Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day, Partnering for Care. Help your adult CF center help you thrive. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This webcast is hosted by the Johns Hopkins Cystic Fibrosis Center and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. It is a part of the Partnering in Care series that focuses on the different roles of CF healthcare professionals in a center that are there to help you or your child with cystic fibrosis thrive. Anyone with CF knows that it takes a team to care for CF. This includes the person with CF, their family, their friends, and the healthcare professionals at the center. Partnership is when a person or persons take part in an activity with others. This activity is cystic fibrosis care. Partnering with your CF healthcare provider is important in order to help you thrive with CF and learn how to fit CF into the busy life of an adult versus fitting an adult life into CF care. This presentation will focus on how adults with CF can be full members of their CF care team and how to manage cystic fibrosis. Questions for this segment came from you, the community. Questions not related to this topic or that ask for medical advice will not be asked or answered. If you have additional questions, I encourage you to talk with the members of your CF care team and get them answered. You can also contact the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation at 800 Fight CF or info at cff.org. Joining me is Dr. Michael Boyle, who is the director of the CF Adult Program at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Leslie. The first question I have is, how do you keep up to date on current practices and how do you know what's going on internationally? You know, being part of the CF community makes this easy because there's a lot of excitement about cystic fibrosis. And so, obviously, there's the normal things. There's reading journals. Um, there's hearing talks. The Cystic Fibrosis Foundation does a wonderful job of keeping us up to date as well. Some of these things are guidelines that they publish, some of the uh, chat rooms and the things that they make available to be able to discuss. And then there's the national meetings, the North American meetings, and also international meetings. So um, it makes it easy. So um, who are the different members of the adult CF team and what's your role on them? Well, like we talked about, the adult care team is, is a mirror image in many ways of the pediatric care team. So we start with the adult with CF, their family, their friends, their spouse, their significant other um, as being the key part. Then obviously there's physicians, the nurses, um, dietitian, a physical therapist or a respiratory therapist many times. Um, there can be a social worker, a psychologist. Um, we try to include our research team as a, a key part of our, our team as well. Um, my role, I think, is multiple things. Um, one of it is to be a team leader, um, but also to encourage, encourage members of the team, to encourage uh, our uh, patients, and also to pay attention to the details, since there's a lot of details in cystic fibrosis that really make uh, are required for the best care. So give me an idea of some of the details that you as the physician of the team pay attention to. So I think part of this, you know, when we actually um, did a study where we went and looked at best performing centers, centers that had the best outcomes around the country, and one of the things they routinely did was to meet beforehand and to talk as a team, each member of the team getting a chance to review what had been going on with the individual cystic fibrosis. And so that could be when it was the last time with their flu shot, what's going on with their annual blood work, what's going on with their lung function, but those are the type of details which make a huge difference. So um, what is the role of the healthcare professional and the adult with CF in keeping up to date on the latest uh, practices, the latest recommendations for care, the latest research, and the latest science? Whose responsibility is what? Um, I think there's, it's a combination. As we talked about, there's some really nice opportunities for all the caregivers, and I don't just mean the physicians, but the, the North American Cystic Fibrosis meetings, we take our entire team. So that we, we take our nurses, our dietitian, everybody in our team specifically to stay updated in these things. And at the same time, the flip side is it's a team. And, and that includes the individual with cystic fibrosis, family um, members, significant others. So taking advantage of uh, things like this, this webcast, other opportunities to, uh, to learn, to be able to ask questions are a key part of that equation as well. 
So a question that just came in, um, this is, uh, you take care of young adults. So we're talking, um, you know, the 19, the 20, the 21 year olds in an adult program. So where are there, or what are their role models, or um, what kind of role models might you recommend for a young adult to use in learning about you know, CF care, or fitting CF care, because you know there's that recommendation that people with cystic fibrosis really shouldn't get together because of the risk of germs. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is actually a big issue, and sometimes it's a challenge, because we would love to be able to have uh, other adults be able to provide some support. Some of this can be done without contact, so some of this can be contact through uh, the internet or through other um, methods. But I think that individual with cystic fibrosis uh, doesn't necessarily have to have as a role model another person with CF. Um, sometimes it can be somebody who's very dedicated to whatever it is, who pays attention to the details, who doesn't get discouraged when times are bad, because those are the type of characteristics which really you need to have the best health with cystic fibrosis. So um, how do you partner or work with adults uh, with CF? How do you establish that relationship and what do you want them to tell you? Um, so I think the key thing is I want them to be honest. I would say be honest because in order for the team to know the best way to be able to uh, help the individual with cystic fibrosis, we need to know exactly what's going on. And so a big part of that is to be, uh, to be honest. That can be be honest about are you really doing your medications? Are there certain obstacles or concerns that are standing in the way of doing your medications? Um, are there financial obstacles? So I think if we... Um, focus on some of those things. One other thing that would be key would be learning to identify your symptoms. So identifying when there's been a change in cough, when there's been more shortness of breath, when there's been some change in health, energy, sleeping patterns, which says, hey, this is something that we need to pay attention to. So uh, an adult with CF um, sent in a question and, and they said, you know, we really don't, I really don't feel that well all the time, so how do I know that subtle difference? How do I d identify that it's just, this is my baseline, or, oh, I'm getting sick and I should call? Well, this comes up all the time, um, because some people will say, well, this is the way I feel all the time. I've sort of forgotten what it feels like to feel good. Right. And so there's a couple of things. One thing is to try to pay attention to key symptoms. Some of those can be things like nighttime cough, less energy. Um, the amount of sputum that you're bringing up. Um, other things, though, can be um, more, you know, more subtle things, um, things where you feel like you're sleeping all the time. Um, and those are the type of things that can be very helpful for, for making a difference. So um, what is, as an adult with CF, what's the role of family members, spouses, significant others, uh, maybe even parents, um, in helping the adult with CF manage this disease? Um, I think one of the key things is encouragement, right? We want to be encouraging to individuals with CF because they have a lot of challenges. So sometimes being encouraging. I would say supportive, and supportive doesn't mean just cheering. Uh, supportive sometimes means being practical. So that may mean a ride to clinic, helping with finances. Um, sometimes accountability, because um, one of the ways to be most encouraging sometimes is to be encouraging, but also to be a little bit challenging, to say, did you do your medicines today? Did you take your enzymes? Um, obviously, it's a, it depends a little bit on the age as you get older, but that can be a wonderful way to be very helpful. Um, tell me, the adult world of CF is, is new for us, which is a great thing, mm -hmm. but what are some of the adult health issues that people, adults with CF face that are different mm -hmm. than in pediatrics? Well, it is, I mean, the fact that we're talking about adults is great. So um, one of the things that's exciting is realize that um, about 48%, about almost 48% of individuals with CF today are 18 years of age or older. In the next two or three years, there'll be more adults with CF than there are uh, kids with CF. And we really have made a transition. Um, at the same time, there are some increasing problems that are maybe more unique as individuals with CF get older. Some of these can be things like diabetes, which is a normal time of onset, maybe between ages 18 and 25. Things like uh, maybe some bone thinning, which certainly begins oftentimes when you're younger, but can be an issue as you get older. Can be things like lung transplantation, which we're going to talk about later. Difficult to treat bacteria. Um, or some of the other things such as vocational issues, getting insurance. The nice thing is that's what your team's there for, to try to support some of those things. So they sound like challenges. They're, to me, they're all signs of success.
because our individuals are living longer, they're having to face things that maybe they weren't quite as uh, are having to face before. So you mentioned uh, CF-related diabetes. Um, is there a relationship, and if so, what is the relationship between CF-related diabetes and lung infections? Well, I think that diabetes is something we're becoming more and more aware of as being very important. Um, there's been several studies now that say that di diabetes, particularly poorly controlled diabetes, is associated with uh, decline in lung function. That's probably because as your blood sugar gets up above 180, it makes it harder for your neutrophils, those white blood cells, that fight off infection to work. So poorly controlled diabetes or non-diagnosed diabetes can set you up for trouble. Um, somebody wanted to know what are adult CF centers doing to take action to improve their patient outcomes or the information um, about the data that is available on the foundation's website for each care center? What are some of the things that they're doing? So there are actually multiple things. Um, we could talk all night about this, but so um, the vast majority of centers in the United States, both pediatric and adult, are involved with quality improvement projects, specifically trying to focus on areas they know they want to improve. And so that means uh, some organized approaches to doing that. One of the specific projects that I was involved with was to lead something called the Adult Cystic Fibrosis Benchmarking Project. It was a project led by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation where we studied centers that had the best outcomes. And I just think one thing that's very important to recognize is that the, the, the centers that did the best were those that worked with their patients to be aggressive. It's easy to think that if you were at a center that had very good outcomes that maybe you wouldn't need IVs, you wouldn't need to be seen very much. The truth is the centers that have individuals who do the best are very aggressive. They actually culture their patients more, they see them more frequently. So I think one of the ways that we can improve this quality is by being aggressive. So you mentioned being aggressive and that's a perfect segue into the next question that came in. This person prefers to be proactive versus reactive based on symptoms. How can they encourage that same attitude in their healthcare providers? Talk to your doctor, talk to your nurse. I mean, I think the care team is always trying to balance. They want the best outcomes, obviously, but they know that adults with CF have challenges as well, jobs, families, other demands on their lives. Um, I think if you want to be in that aggressive group, don't hesitate to talk to your physician, um, whether it's you or your parents of, of a teen, to talk with your physician and say, hey, I want to be uh, somebody who's aggressive. I want to make my health the most important thing, and they'll get the message. Okay, the last question came in just this evening. Hot off the presses. Hot off the presses. They want to know what your dream is for CF. Well, the ultimate dream would be a cure, right? And I think. Um, we've been talking about a cure for many years. I think in some ways people hear the cure now and they sort of roll their eyes because I think we've been talking about that for so long. Some of the research that's going on, which I think is the next, uh, the next webcast, right? The next webcast. Really yes. is exciting because it's going to be addressing underlying problems with cystic fibrosis. So my dream would be that we use the weapons we have right now the best that we can to keep people healthy enough so that when those major breakthroughs come through, everybody will be ready. Thank you, Mike. As Mike said and as we talked, it does take a team for an adult with CF to be able to manage the disease. And remember, you're not alone. You are a full member of the CF care team. I want to encourage you to learn more by talking with the different members of your CF team. There's also information on the CF Foundation website. Under the Living with Cystic Fibrosis, Staying Healthy, there's information about diet, lung health, as well as information about patient assistance program, insurance coverage, work and CF. I also want to encourage you to stay tuned to this section of our website as we are going to be rolling out a new adult section here over the, hopefully they'll be posted by the end of the year and more coming. There's also information under the therapies treat under the treatments therapy section of our website. And this is where you can find the CF care guidelines. One of the care guidelines is specifically for adults with cystic fibrosis. However, not all of the CF Foundation care guidelines are available on the website. This is due to copyright restrictions from the medical journals in which these guidelines were published. When these articles become available publicly, the Foundation will post them on their website. You can also learn more by searching PubMed. PubMed is a database of the medical and scientific journals online that is supported from the National Library of Medicine at the National Institute of Health. 
Additionally, the National Institute of Health, MedlinePlus.gov, has information for patients, families, and friends on different diseases, conditions, and wellness. There's also cfroundtable.com. This is a newsletter for adults with cystic fibrosis and is produced by the United States Adults Cystic Fibrosis Association. Then there's hopkinscf.org, which is the Johns Hopkins CF Center website. This presentation is a part of the Partnering for Care series available on the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation website. This series includes topics such as partnering for your child with CF, during transition into adult care, when thinking about a lung transplantation, what it means to be a CF Foundation accredited care center, how to work with your CF nurse, your dietitians, your respiratory, your physical therapist, your social worker, your psychologist, all to help you or your child with CF thrive. I also want to encourage you to watch an archived CF Foundation webcast on the Foundation's website. You can hear about research, fertility information for adults, building life skills to manage CF, adult nutrition, and more. This concludes the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Virtual CF Education Day, Partnering for Care, Help Your Adult CF Center Help You Thrive. I would like to thank you for watching this Education Day and submitting your questions, Mike for answering those questions that have come in from the community, Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin, Emily Ann Powell, and the CF Foundation for making this broadcast possible, and Genentech for the unrestricted educational grant. Thank you.